Good afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Ambarish Kumar, and now we are going to start a discussion session on presentation skills. I am sure that uh, most of you have gone through the lecture slides on data presentation and presentation skills. So, let us try to discuss. If you have any questions, doubt, I will try to answer all of those. Let us go to Malana Ajat College. So, my question is related to workplace communication. Yes, in particular yes, on what? Sir, I want to ask that sometimes in a communication there occurs a situation we call it a snowball effect how to come over it or how to prevent it for this i am not the best person to answer this question so i will suggest that you please post this question into the discussion forum and she would answer it okay if you have any questions related to data presentation and presentation skills please ask that and i would clarify that please post your question in the discussion forum knowledge institute salem Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I am Sharath from Knowledge Institute of Technology. My question is based on uh, when we are working in a corporate company and the two in a team, uh, how to manage with the team, sir? Because as we are engineering students, we are given lot of training on how to deal with uh, latest technologies and missionaries, but we are not even concerned about how to deal with people. In a big corporate company, we have to know how to deal with people so that we can develop the product in a great manner. My great thing is that how to create a bond between that uh, colleagues so that we can do that product even better. Sarad, uh, very good question, but uh, I would say that again, this question is uh, not something which is related to my module on data presentation. So, what I will say is that please post this question in the discussion forum and the concerned faculty member will answer your question. Is there any question related to data presentation from your college, from any student? Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I am Divya from Mechanical Engineering. Now uh, we are in the third year sir, we are going to go to fourth year and we are uh, in a level where we have to present a project and we have like we cannot put uh, detail all the details in the project. We, it should be like two to three pages of the project and it should be in a clear manner how to present it sir. Okay, again uh, this something which is not related to this module but I would say that whenever you are writing a report, please make sure, please uh, write it in such a way. Uh, um, what you should do, you should really emphasize why you are doing this project, why it is so important and what will be the outcome of this project. Okay? So, other than this, I think uh, what you should also do, post this question on the discussion forum and the concerned faculty member who has covered the presentation skills uh, module uh, will answer this question in a detailed manner. Uh, the centers which have questions related to my module, uh, the module by Professor Ambarish Kumar should raise the hand and I will be very happy to answer all of those questions. Uh, for other sections, you please post your question on the discussion forum and the concerned faculty member will answer your queries. Asia Pacific Institute, Haryana. Sir, I am Anupama Mishra and I am from uh, Asia Pacific Institute of Information Technology, Panipat. I have a question for you. When it is appropriate for a speaker to use humor while he is presenting? So, her question is why it is important for a speaker to put some humor in the talk or whenever uh, he or she is doing the teaching. When you are uh, teaching, it is very important that you are basically keeping the entire class with you and therefore, it is often a good idea to uh, put something which is let us say not even related to the subject and it keeps the students uh, interested in your talk. I mean, that is the simple uh, answer I have. This is uh, Yashraj Bharadwaj from Asia Pacific Institute of Information Technology. So, my question is, uh, I was going to the PPT mentioned in the IT Bombay site and uh, I saw a line like it was written, uh, graphs uh, should not be using variables. How should that we plot the variables on a graph? Uh, normally, yeah. when you are making a two dimensional plot, okay, you have two axes. One of them is called horizontal axis okay, and the other one is called vertical axis or y axis. So, when you are making a plot between uh, x and y, that means you are trying to uh, understand the relation between two variables x and y. Okay? So, whatever is your x variable, you put that thing on the x axis and whatever is the variable which is related to the vertical axis, you put that thing on the y axis. If you are trying to look at the connection between two variables x and y, one variable will be on the x axis and the other variable will be, will be on the y axis. So, basically, if you are making a plot between just two variables or 2D plot, one variable on one axis and the other variable on the other axis. Does that answer your question? Question is how do we select the variable? Okay, question is how do we select the variable? So, whenever you are, uh, you have to make a plot, there are two things. There are variables can be of two types. One of them can be called independent variable 
and the other one is called dependent variable. Independent variable is the one okay, which decides the value of the dependent variable. For example, uh, if you are engineering student, you know that if you write y is equal to f x, then in that case y is a function of x. x is considered as an independent variable and y is taken as a dependent variable. So, whenever you are making a plot, your independent variable has to be normally on the x axis or on the horizontal axis and your dependent variable has to be always on the vertical axis or on the y axis. I mean by looking at the variables itself, it is very easy to identify which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. We scale a graph according to a, like if we are having a really big data, mm -hmm. so how do we scale a graph? Independent data is uh, not that big, but the dependent one is a larger one. Okay. So, how do we scale it? Very, good, to the very good question. Excellent question. So, his question is if your dependent data is very large, how do you scale it? So, normally when you are talking about the dependent variable whose values can differ by a large order of magnitude. That means, suppose you have a dependent variable whose value can go from let us say 0 0.001 to up to something like 10 to the power 6, 10 to the power 7 and so on. In those cases, people do not use a normal graph paper. In those cases, people use something called a logarithmic graph paper. It is very common in electrical engineering that people try to look at the variation of the frequency over a big range. Okay? So, sometimes people go from very fre small frequency, let us say 10 hertz and they go to megahertz and gigahertz. Now, if you have to plot such a big variation, you cannot use a normal graph paper. In those cases, people use something called a logarithmic graph paper. So, whenever your range of variable is, I mean the, the values of the variable quantities or dependent variable is very large. In that case, you do not use the axis as a normal axis. In those cases, people use something called a logarithmic axis. And in the market, if you go, you will also find log graph papers. Okay? They are also called log papers. Did you get the answer Last to your question? question sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I okay. got it. But uh, one last question. Yes, please. Uh, I was going to the PPT only. Uh, it was written, there was a statement there, do not use figures unnecessarily and pace and are costly. What like costly means here? Okay. The thing is that normally if you are writing a paper and if you are sending it to publishing house, most of the publishing house charge you some money for publishing your paper. Okay, and normally it goes by the number of figures and the number of pages that are there in your manuscript. Okay, so if you are having and there is also a policy, sometimes they do not charge for the black and white figures, but if your figures are colored figures, then they charge a lot of money. And normally, people in developing countries do not do not have that huge amount of money to pay. First point I was trying to make is that try to reduce the length of your article if you can do because it will save the number of pages. And the second thing is that since graphs take a lot of space, there are some trivial observations you should not probably put them in the main text of the paper. You can, if you can replace them by some statement that will be really good. That way you can save the page charges. Okay. Thank you much for your precious time sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon sir. Good afternoon. I just want to ask you if a group of people are working on a one project and uh, individually they have their own analysis and if uh, we want to represent that all, all of those analysis in a one report, how we can represent that in a data structure uh, or in other formats. Okay, very good question. His question is that suppose there is, there is a group of people who have worked on one project, everything is identical and everyone has got his own analysis, how you will present that data in one single graph, right? So, normally when you have a collection of data and you want to show you do not want to show the observation of just one person, but you want to show the observation of the entire group. Normally, in those cases, what you can do, you can take the average of all of those observations for the selected number of data points and plot the average. And if you want to show that how much was the variation for each of the individuals of that group, you can also plot the standard deviation. Okay, thank you, sir. 1061, go ahead for your question. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, is the graphical interpretation necessary for every presentation? Well, as uh, I think I have also mentioned in the lecture that normally people do not like to see the numbers. Okay, People like to see the things visually. So, let us say if you have an observation or a data set, then the best thing is that do not show the data as such. If you can make a 
nice graph out of your data that is the best thing you can do and if you want to even take that thing one level up then if you can make the animation or video of uh, how the things are varying with time that would be the best thing to include in a presentation thank you sir and uh, one more question yes as i am an it student mm -hmm. let me know in i in our field where does the graphical necessity would be I mean nowadays most of the IT students uh, go to the software companies right. Nowadays a, a new thing has started in this world and that is called data mining where uh, a huge chunk of data is available from various resources and people are trying to analyze the data ok. And this is where it becomes very important to understand using the data which is already which has been already generated and let us say is available either in a private domain or in a open forum how do you use that data to make conclusions about different things. So, I think it is very important for even IT student to learn how to make sense of the huge amount of data which is available. I would also like to add that uh, I mean if you do a Google search you will find that a lot of business companies like Google, Amazon and other things in order to sell their product they do a lot of data mining that means they try to understand the behavior of the consumers and other things what kind of products they are buying. and in order to understand all of that it becomes very important to understand what kind of data you should collect and how you should present it to the say your company board. Okay, thank you sir. Okay. 1205 go ahead for your question. Hello good afternoon sir. Sir uh, my name is Prince we are I am from uh, MGM college of NOIDA and we want to uh, uh, ask one question that how to represent uh, it is a co scenario based question that is the oracle has re recently removed uh, many engineers from his uh, uh, the, 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 the department and it has got uh, got the profit of 5% from his business and uh, uh, earned profit from 10 more than 10% from it uh, removing of the employees how to interpret that such kind of data in qualitative and uh, quantitative well the thing is that i cannot make a comment on these kind of company decisions un until I have already seen the data from the companies ok. So, I do not know what kind of data the company uh, CEOs and other things have seen and based on that they have made the interpretation. Since I do not have any knowledge about that data I cannot make any comment on that. So, that is uh, another question that how to get relate uh, such kind of data but it, it is correct or incorrect. How to get the removal of false data from that? I think one of the things which I mentioned in my lectures, let us say if you are trying to make a graph, ok. One of the things which you should see that if you have a trend in the graph and if you see that if there are some data points which are not following that trend, then probably you should go and check back whether the observation which you made for that those particular data points were correct or not. That is the only way to check. I mean check, see if there is a trend in the data and if there are data points which are deviating from a given trend only that is the way to find out whether your data is correct or not. Most of the data points are following a trend and there are a few of them which are not following a given trend then it is possible that you have made some mistakes in the measurement while doing any calculation or anything like that. Good evening sir, my name is Megha. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a question that if we have some raw data how do we set it like in which form we should represent it in a presentation. Ok, uh, can I ask you to be more specific when you say raw data, raw data collected from what kind of source? You are in your lectures you have mentioned that figures should be used more often uh, in case when representing the data rather than tabular form. Right. So, if I have some data a survey of a college students on their marks or something like that mm -hmm. in what form should it be represented in a presentation? Well, uh, obviously if the number of students in your college are 1000 then if you are going to put that thing it will take several several pages right. And if yes. you want to make a presentation let us say this was the performance of the students in a given exam for this college then obviously you cannot show these thousand numbers to anyone. In those cases you have to make a plot because people do not have time to look at those thousand data points. So, best strategy when you have a huge chunk of data ok and you have to show the group statistics best thing is to make a plot. Does that answer your question? Yes sir, thank you sir. Uh, 1043 go ahead for your question. Good afternoon sir, my students will ask you question. Hello sir, good afternoon, myself Krishna Dekar, what is significant of outlay? Whenever you want to see let us say correlation between two variables, you make something called a scatter plot ok. Idea behind making a scatter plot is that you want to see if these two variables have any correlation ok. Now, it is possible that when you are making a scatter plot some of the data points may not follow a trend ok. It is possible that some of the data points might be completely off from the trend and those data points are called 
outliers. Now there are two things which can happen. One possibility is that you got the outlier due to some mistake or you made a mistake while doing the calculation. So outliers are those things which are not following the trend. And whenever you are getting an outlier in a scatter plot, it is always a good idea to go back and check that particular data points to find out whether you have really made a mistake or your outlier point is telling you something interesting about that particular data point or observation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, I wanted to ask you about data interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it is used mostly in exams, whatever exams you are preparing for, like th there is some weightage. So can you please tell me, how can we memorize it easily? How can we memorize what? I mean, I am I'm not sure what you mean by data presentation. Can you be more specific? So what she wants to ask is, how can we use all these graphs and uh, charts and whatever the data presentation uh, methods available to us for hmm. better memory retention for exams and all those things? Basically, what I will say is that, you know, um, there are different kind of plots which a student can make. Okay, and these different kind of plots are made for different kind of purposes. So one of the things which you have to learn is that which type of plot or graph is appropriate for which type of data. If you just remember that one, I think your job is done. And whenever you have a new new type of data, you can always deal with it and you can make the appropriate kind of plot for that. So I think this is not something which is there is a lot of information which you have to me memorize. All you have to memorize is if you want to see you, if you want to get a certain kind of interpretation from a given graph, what kind of graph you should be making? Thousand different kinds of graphs or plots. There are only a couple of them. Good afternoon, sir. Where we are getting uh, quantum data, which is in 4D, uh, we have to represent that in 2D. Or how to represent that in 4D data in 2D? So normally what people do, I mean uh, 4D is something which is very hard to visualize, okay? Because we live in a 3D world. Is yes. that correct? You agree with me? So our intuition is only yes, for sir. the 3D world. So normally what people do, a lot of variables and you want to see how the things are varying. Then in that case, out of those four variables, you can fix the value of one of the variables at a given point and then you make a 3D plot. Then you make a second 3D plot by fixing the variable of the value of the fourth variable at some other point. And this is how you can make the visual representation of your 4D data. So all, all you have to do is that out of four possible variables, take few values of the fourth variable and then make the 3D plots for those. Okay, so which type of chart or graph we have to use in that in, data? In, in those cases, you have to make a 3D plot and there are a lot of softwares which can do it. For example, one of the commercial software is MATLAB and then other than that, there are also many other ones like GNU plot, which is an open source one. There are also open source version of MATLAB, which one can use. Uh, so there are many softwares which are available, both commercially as well as as an open source for making the 3D plots. You have to do a Google search. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So my question is, uh, in data, I am a civil engineer student. We have errors in data. In surveying of land, we have errors. So how to represent that error? Well, uh, I mean, whenever you say error, what kind of errors are those? When you make a mistake in recording your data, like uh, what kind of errors? The reading type of data, observation. So basically what you can do, I'm not sure whether uh, if you're doing the things correctly, then you should not be getting anything like an error, okay? there can be just a variation in the data. If your measurements are correct, okay, all you can expect is the variation in the measurement, right? You are trying to measure the value of a certain quantity. If you are doing it or your friend is doing it, data is going to be slightly different because everyone has a slightly different style of recording the data, okay? So what you can do in those cases, if there is a variability which is coming because of the change of the person, okay, or change of the day or anything, in those cases, you basically plot the data uh, take the average of the data and along with that you also show the standard deviation. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Double one three one. Go ahead for your question. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. So my question is that uh, can you give us uh, a brief knowledge about the error bars with a real time example? How to represent the data if using error bars? Giving an example. Yeah. If you have gone through the lecture slides, there are uh, many different kind of error bars. Okay. Real life example is go to your lab. Go to your lab and let's say you are trying to, a group of students are trying to measure, uh, let's say, length of a rod. Okay. Now everyone is using the same scale. Okay. Rod is same, but if different students are measuring it, their readings might be slightly off from one another. Right. So question is how you will present their data because one student records something else, the other one, uh, for other one, it can be slightly different. 
and therefore along with the average of the length of the rod you have to also say what was the variation okay so in those cases either you can plot you can report the length of the rod along with either standard deviation or standard error of the mean so basically you can find out many real life examples in the lab itself okay i just give you an example of measurement but there could be many other things sir one more question yes. is there uh, suppose we have to represent a data in which more than two entities are there so which is the best way to represent that data uh, what do you mean by more two entities means uh, you have total two dependent variables sir, or just uh, one independent variable and one dependent variable sir there would be one uh, independent variable out of which other two are uh, dependent on this yeah so in those cases people can make a 3d plot so what you do uh, on x axis you plot the independent variable and y on y and z axis you plot the dependent variable so rather than making a 2d plot you have to make a 3d plot and as i said uh, to some other college that there are many commercial as well as free softwares for making the 3d plots thank you sir 1058 go ahead for your question good evening sir good evening Uh, I'm Ritika from third year computer engineering, mm -hmm. and the question is based on error bars. Uh, how do I add error bars on scatter plots? So you can always add the error bars on the scatter plot. Okay. Normally, if you are making a scatter plot, then you are just plotting the average of the data. Okay. Let's say uh, you are making a scatter plot. So each of the data point, if it is just not single observation, then on the scatter plot, actually you are plotting the average of the values for each of the data points and then along with that average either you can use the standard deviation if you want to show the spread of the data or you can show the standard error of the mean if you want to show the variability of the mean so it is possible to plot the error bars 1228 go ahead for your question good evening sir good evening. i am vibhyana preeti from loyola ikam college mm -hmm. sir actually can you suggest some uh, formal presentation and data visualization tools for us to give a good presentation well i think most of the people who like to work on a windows system most of them use powerpoint and people who work on let's say linux system in those cases uh, people use open office so those are the main tools which people use for making the presentation i'm not sure if that was your your question and then for graph plotting you can uh, use uh, different kind of softwares for example even microsoft excel can give you very good plots similarly open office if you go to the open office you can also make very good 2d plots if you want to make 2d as well as 3d plots you can use something called genu plot in both windows and linux and other than that if you want to make really very good for scientific papers then people use something called grace or xm grace thank you sir center 1178 go ahead for your question sir how can we use pyd graph using scatter plot i will say that what you have to do in this case it will be very hard to normally scatter plot is made between only two variables so what you have to do you have to keep make the many many scatter plots by fixing the values of all the remaining three variables even in 3d you can make a scatter plot but if you want to make it i mean if you have a five variables then you have to fix the constant value of the two variables only then it is possible next question is how to maintain one body language at presentation i will say that uh, body language is something which um, i don't cover um, in my module this is covered by some other instructor so please post your question on the discussion forum and the concerned instructor will reply back to your uh, question center 1318 go ahead for your question uh, good evening sir my question is uh, is there any point rule that can help me to uh, determine which data points i can skip in my presentation well i would say that when you are working on a problem okay i think and you are going to present it i think you are the best person to decide what is the important thing to say and what is not so important okay i think when you are making a presentation you have to decide what is very important for people to show and what is less or not so important to show so i think when you are making a presentation it is you who is going to decide which is the most important part of my work which i should present to the people you are the person who knows it best what is the important part of the work which i have done also sir uh, when i'm presenting my uh, the presentation should i try to keep it uh, as simple as possible uh, or should i uh, present the most data i can although it is not directly related to my module but what I, what i will say that whenever you are making a presentation okay in front of you there might be a group of people who don't know anything about your field there might be people uh, who have some idea about the problem and there might be very expert people okay and when you are making a presentation 
it is very important keep this thing in mind that your presentation should be in such a way that everyone should at least understand some of it. So, I think it, it is a good idea to keep the presentation simple and uh, it is uh, very important to show only your important data ok. Even if you have a huge set of data collection, but if it does not give any information to the people ok, there is no point of showing it. Thank you sir. Center 1154, go ahead for your question. Good evening sir, I am K. S. Peter, final year mechanical engineering from Tandai Periyar Government Institute of Technology. My question is, I take the one exponential equation, the equation is uh, two variables available. Uh, I take the only one variable is the input and another variable is the output. I uh, put in the input is uh, more than 300 data, 300 data of output is available. I use this equation, I directly represent the this output in graph. The method is follow. Okay, so you have 300 data points as an input to the equation sir. and then you are getting 300 data points as output. What is the question now? Exponential equation directly represented in graph. Exponential equation you have 300 input points and you are getting 300 output points right. So, what is your question? I do not find out the data output, but I directly represent it in graph the method I follow. One of the things you can do you can write a small code and you put all, all of those 300 data points if they are equally spaced then even a small computer program will give you the, all, all of those 300 y values for the exponential function ok. Or if you want to make both plot as well as you want to get the values, one of the best thing you can do you can put your x variable in a column in an excel file, you put the formula for the y variable in the second column and just use the drag option, it will give you all the y values and then you make a plot in the excel itself or open office. Ok sir, that input is uh, less than 10 or uh, under means is ok. But more than 300 is uh, time consumption is very large. So, how do I follow the easy method? Because I do the main project. Calculation time consume is very more because 300 data is available. So, I directly represent the output in graph. So, less than 100 means it is possible to calculate it is calculating by directly. But more than 300. Mm -hmm. No. So, what I am saying that time you, you, you already have 300 data points, x data points and you want to get the corresponding y data points, right? And you have some yes. exponential function, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, y is equal to fx, right? So, if yes. you do not want to do a calculation by hand, what I am saying, write a small simple computer program, ok, which uh, where you can read the x values from a file and then do the calculation using that computer program. It will just take one line and then you write all the output values in another file, you can get everything. So, read the data, input data from a file and do the calculation and then write the output data for those 300 data points in a file, very simple, it will not take more than 2 minutes provided you know the computer programming, otherwise you can take the help from excel. You type in all the 300 values and then you use the exponential function and then use the drag option, it will give you everything in a minute, ok. Ok sir, but uh, this is the best language for uh, creating the program. Ok, so uh, what I will say right, that. Uh, one of the simplest language which I use is called formula translation for run ok. Then nowadays C language is very often used in many colleges. So, one can use C, C++, Java ok, you just wants to learn our Fortran and C. Scientific calculation people use Fortran. Sir, could you please um, clarify us about the outliner? Ok, so outliers are the yes, data, sir. so suppose you are making a scatter plot between one independent variable and a dependent variable. Normally, if you are trying to see the correlation, you will see a trend, but if you find that there is some data point which is not following a trend, ok, then that data point will be called outliers. We can have outliers only in scatter plot. Yes, uh, I mean in general, e even in uh, in if you are making a 2D plot, if there is a uh, if you see a trend and if, if something is, which is out of trend, then it is possible that one uh, that thing can be also outlier, could be due to uh, mistake of your measurement or could be due to mistake of your uh, calculation. But I cannot understand. So, I am saying that outliers are normally seen when you are making a plot between a dependent variable and independent variable, that means when you are making an uh, x and y plot. So, Scatter plots are normally used to see the correlation between two sets of data, ok. Let us say how does the temperature of a place varies when you go to different heights, ok. We know that if you we, if you try to make that kind of plot, what we know that as we go to high and height, higher and higher heights, the temperature decreases, ok. Now, suppose you are trying to do this measurement 
Ideally, you expect that the trend of the graph should be linearly decreasing with the height, but it is possible that when you are making that plot, one or two data points is not following that linear trend, it is not along that linear curve. Okay? So, those points will be called outliers. Okay, sir, I understand uh, what is outlier, mm. uh, but I am asking we have outliers only in scatter plot. Uh, yes, uh, normally in the scatter plot, plot, which is a plot between independent variable and dependent variable, you see the if the, there is a data point which is of the trend, that point is called outlier. So, it is defined for the scatter plots. Thank you, sir. Center 1151, one, go ahead for your question. What are the cases? When uh -huh. A table representation is better than the graph representation. What are the cases where table representation is better than graph representation? Okay. So, when you have just a few data points, when making a graph may not convey that much information, I think in those cases you can make a table. But if your data set is really used, then you should really avoid the table. So, what I will say that when you have a large set of data, and a data has a trend which you can see visually, then in those cases you should use graph and if your data set is small okay, and normally if you do not see a, a expect to see a trend in the visual representation, you should use a table. Thank you sir. Okay? One more question. Sir. Yes. Sir, yes. I want to ask that should I have audio or video presentation in the uh, video representation in the presentation? Okay. So, very related question, but very good question. So, first thing is that when you are making a presentation, do not put a lot of text, a lot of text on your slides because you know if you put the text, then people will be just reading the text and they will not be listening to you. I mean that is that is what the human nature is uh, and that is what my perception is and therefore, use less amount of text. Then if you, if you have to present a data point, uh, a set of data let us say then you make a graph instead of a table okay? because people like to see the things visually and if your let us say data is varying with time okay? and if you want to see something which is varying with time or if you want to see any variation, if you can make a visual representation of that in form of uh, animation, okay? then I think that is the best thing to do. Okay? So, I, I think graph is better but video is the best, especially when you are doing a uh, working in the area of biology. Uh, most of the times people also put the videos or animation of the their observations or their calculations. So, the, the short message is that graph is always better than text and video or animation is always better than a graph. Uh, what are the common powerpoint uh, errors that we should uh, avoid? So, one of the common powerpoint error is do not use too many slides. Okay, because when you, uh, people start to make the PowerPoint slides, they just do not keep a track of the time. When people are doing a teaching or presentation, they uh, normally they make a huge number of slides and it turns out that most of the time they are not able to finish their pre presentation in time. That is the first mistake they make. Okay? The second thing is that they try to put a lot of text on one slide. That is something one should avoid. Okay? They put a lot of text, they end up spending a lot of time in going through that text. Okay? And sometimes the font size is so small that people who are sitting even a, at a distance of 1 or 2 meter cannot see it. Okay? Those are the common mistakes which people make while making PPT presentations. Thank you sir. One more question, uh, what are the things that I should keep in mind while uh, like starting the design of the presentation? First thing is that let us say when you are giving a research talk or anything, first thing which you should do, you should try to spend some time on giving the introduction of the problem and why you are working it and why it is important. Sir, 1, 2, 9, 2, go ahead for your question. Good evening, sir. Uh, I am Akash Yadav and sir, my question is uh, from a given graph, can we detect the uh, uh, quantitative characteristics as, as well as uh, quali qualitative characteristics? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, when you have a graph, it gives you both the information at the same time. It gives you the quantitative information of the data. Let us say, let us say you have, you, have, you have made a plot between the height of a place and temperature of the place. Okay? So, for each of the heights, you know the temperature. Okay? So, that is the quantitative information. Now, let us say when you look at this graph, you see that it has a decreasing trend. Okay? So, this also tells you qualitatively that if you go to higher and higher heights, then the 
temperature decreases. So, a graph actually can help you to make both quantitative observation as well as qualitative observations. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. I have one question. How can we use a chart of making effective presentation on any topic? Which type of chart? Whenever you have to present a data, okay, either from an experiment or from an observation, and if you want to make a presentation, in that case, you have to make a chart to present that data. Okay. In other cases, it is not required. Only if you have a data to show, only then you show a plot or chart. Any other question? Thank you, sir. Center one one six two. Go ahead for your question. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is that uh, as you have explained earlier, uh, that the general convention uh, while representing an independent and dependent variable in a two dimensional graph huh? is that we normally uh, plot the independent variable in an x-axis and then the dependent variable goes on y-axis. Yes. Okay. But the economists do not seem to follow this convention, like specifically in case of demand and supply graph. Like, is there any special reason behind it? Like uh, the price, which is uh, usually uh, please say that when plotting in price and quantity. When we plot price and quantity in a demand graph or a supply graph, uh -huh. so, uh, what we do is that uh, we plot price, which is uh, usually an independent variable, on y-axis, uh -huh. and then uh, the quantity, which is dependent uh, on us. So, so, you are talking about a 3D plot, right? Price, demand and yeah. supply. No, it's price and quantity. So, there are two variables, price and quantity. quantity. And what is your question? And um, usually price independent variable and quantity demanded depends upon price. Like if you alter the price, there is a change in quantity demanded. Yeah, of course, it, it is very obvious, right? That if something is very expensive, I will not buy it. And therefore, I mean people will not buy it uh, until they, they are really in a great need of that, okay? In those cases, it is the price which decides whether people are going to buy it or not. In those cases, if people plot the demand on the y-axis, I think it is reasonable to do it. But uh, normally, the convention in economics is that we plot uh, this price on y-axis, quantity uh, demanded on x-axis. Okay. Uh, okay so, uh, so, what I will suggest to you because I am not from the field of economics, please post this question in the discussion forum. I will look, look at the reference book and if you have some reference book, please also write that from which reference book uh, you are quoting this and I will try to answer your question why it is like that in the field of economics, okay? Why that kind of particular convention is used, which is very different from what we use in science and engineering, okay? There is one more question. Yes. How do we differentiate this moderation and mediation whenever we are studying relationship between two variables, let us say three variables, right? And uh, uh, how like do we do not know the nature of all three variables. So, how do we go about studying if any of these variables is getting an uh, moderation and mediation effect? Like, how do we identify this thing for the first time whenever we are studying some, like, let us say, uh, in exploratory way we are studying three variables? Okay, two, uh, two of them are dependent and independent. Uh, let's say the third variable, we want to know what kind of effect it has on this or uh, how does it affect the relationship. So, so how do we you are using the word moderation and mediation. Again, I am not from the field of economics. So, uh, what I will say that uh, whatever you have, you are you are asking very specific question from the field of economics and unfortunately, I am not from the field of economics. So, I will say that you please post this question. I will look at your question. I will. Uh, look at the book okay, and then I will answer your question because I do not want to give a wrong answer. I am not from the field, but I will read your question and I will try to answer it. Okay, Thank you very much. Okay, uh, It looks like if there is any question, please hand raise. Otherwise, if you do not have any questions as of now, please post them on the discussion forum and we will answer those questions. Okay, So, if uh, there are no further questions, uh, we will uh, end this session and I would like to thank you for being a part of this uh, discussion. Yes, please go ahead. Hello, sir. I am Alisha. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yes, Alisha, please go ahead Hello? with your question. Okay, sir. So, my question is uh, what sh uh, sequence should we follow to represent the data? In which sequence we can present the data in a better manner? I will answer it. So, first thing is that you, you are, when you are collecting data, you are working on a problem, right? So, first thing is that you state the problem for the audience that what is the problem you are working on and why this problem is important. Then you discuss the methodology solving that problem. Okay, how did you collect the uh, what was the methodology for collecting that data? And then you show them that okay, look, I have collected this data, and this the this is how the data looks like. These are the plots, and then you try to make the inference from the data. Okay, so the data which I have collected for this particular problem tells me this, this, and this. So you then you make your conclusions based on the data. So this is the right sequence to do the things. 
Okay, sir. Thank you. I have one question more. Yes. So, uh, what should we add? What should we can add to the data representation to make it more catchy, to make it more interesting? So, I think I already answered it uh, for some of the colleges. Whenever you are showing a data, okay, if a data shows a trend, do mention that there is a trend in the data, okay, and then if you can make an animation of your data, something is changing with time, if you, uh, or something is changing with the distance, okay. If things are changing, if your data shows that things are changing, then if you can make an animation of that, that will be the best thing to do rather than showing the graph itself because graph gives you a static picture. Okay? And if you make an animation, people like to see the uh, and if you show the things are varying in your presentation, then it, it is it really makes uh, uh, people interested in your work. Okay, sir. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hello. Present the uh, more data like the, uh, the people count of uh, village and number of number of women uh, men and uh, again the educated people well uh, non educated people uh, all data uh, related to village put uh, in one single graph it is allowed okay so let's say if you have gone to a village and you have made different kind of observation number of educated people number of uneducated people and like that right Anna? that is what is your question so in they, these cases what you are doing you are try, uh, your your although you are making the observation over one population let's say population in a village but your data sets are not related to one another like uh, you are looking at the number of educated peoples number of uneducated peoples let's say their weight their height other things so in the, these cases i think what you can make is a bar chart and each of these observations like number of educated people will be one bar, number of uneducated people will be one bar and then number of people let us say with kids will be one bar and so on. Yes, you can show them, all of them in one, one graph. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. sir I am Tahir from uh, Pacific Institute of Technology, Udaipur. Sir, my question is uh, which software is used to draw the graph in civil engineering? Which software is used to draw the graph in civil engineering? Well. I am not a person from civil engineering, but I do work on traffic problems. Okay, and for me, any software which can make 2D plots, like uh, I work on, let's say, I, I look at traffic flow on a road. Okay, so for uh, making those kind of plots, like flux versus density, I can use any software available, Excel or XM Grace or anything. So it really depends on like problem. You know, civil engineering is a very big field. I am uh, not sure about which particular problem uh, you are working on. Uh, it really depends on like what you really want to represent. So I cannot give you very particular advice, but for me, most of the things which fall into the domain of civil engineering for me uh, can be done using any plotting software. Thank you, sir. Now we are uh, closing this discussion session and I would like to thank you for uh, being with me for this session.